My name is Kieran Hyder. Uh, I work for CFAS, which is the Centre for Environment, Fisheries and Agriculture Science, part of the UK government. Um, and I also co chair the um, ICES Working Group on Recreational Fishing Surveys, along with Harry Streelu. You'll be hearing more about that later on in the week. Um, it's quite interesting, the two talks that I've just heard, definitely, because um, I, I, I've come at this from a slightly different angle. Um, I'm coming at it from, from kind of deciding how we can use the data and then collecting data for that use. Um, whereas you guys seem to be collecting data and then trying to then use that, that uh, data. Both of the approaches are equally valid and equally useful and I can see already some, some potential ways that we may be able to use the data going forward. So I'll be interested to talk more about that later. So what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about a few things. I think I'm probably preaching to the converted, so my first two slides are probably uh, a little above and beyond. Uh, why should anglers engage with science? The second one, which we often forget as scientists, why should scientists engage with anglers? Um, and then thinking about working together in terms of some of the examples of the work that we're carrying out within CFAS in collaboration with other partners. Um, on a number of different different areas. And what I'm going to do as I go through that is, is think about some of the issues that you might have with the data that you collect and the methods that, in, with the methods that you use or the novel methods that you use. So first of all, why should anglers engage with science? Well, we know that there are many uses of the marine environment and policy is evidence-based. So what we need is evidence-based. So as an angler, what you, I, want is more and bigger fish to catch. Um, for that, we need to ensure that angling is represented opposite all the other views, and that's what Jan Kapal and Remy are doing. You know, they're making sure that people take into account angling views when they're setting policy. But funding for the data that we've got that we want to collect is limited. So we need to find novel ways to build this evidence base. And that's exactly the stuff that you guys in Fish Brain and Fish Base have been talking about. Um, and anglers also want high quality data. Um, I know that a lot of the, the issues that anglers have with data that's being collected by scientists is that they're not representative. They don't represent true angling practices. Um, so it's very important that anglers engage with scientists to ensure that the data that we have is high quality and it's representative and it can be used not just for scientific purposes but for the purposes of the angling community so that they can set and develop their own policies based on the data that we collect. So what about scientists? Why should we engage with anglers? Well, I think what I've learned um, being sitting a little bit on the fence myself, being an angler and a scientist, I feel that anglers know a lot more about angling than scientists, and scientists know a lot more about scientific methods than anglers. So between the two of us, only when you get to a tree partnership can you actually get the quality of data that you need and increase the utility. And you might have heard of a term which has come about very recently, it's an Americanism, rather horrible I think, called citizen science. And there are a number of ways that, uh, that we can use or that we can work with, as scientists, with the Anglo community in partnership to collect scientific data. And traditionally, we've done the two things on the left-hand side. We've done experiments, we've done things like tagging fish or, or monitoring you know, the fish distributions that we've got in, in uh, fish banks. But I think on the right-hand side of the picture, with the advent of the internet and web 2.0 technologies, we're starting to see new things that we can do in terms of internet-based citizen science. Um, things like data entry, um, there's uh, the projects on the internet called Old Weather, where uh, it's part of the Zooniverse, people are entering thousands and thousands of records of temperature from World War I essentially. People are just going online and doing it. It's a bit of a, something that they do while they're watching the TV. And I could see how we could do that maybe with angling catch records if we could uh, digitise those. People are analysing samples. People are 
trying to match known whale calls with uh, recordings from hydrophones so we can, we can track whales in the ocean. You can do things like model exploration or even grid computing. I'm sure you guys have messed around with settings, you know, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence where you downloaded a screensaver and it ran stuff on your computer. But there are things like that now for disease modeling and all sorts of other things. So there are lots of important uh, things for, for us to work together. Well, let's have a think about working together and some of the examples of working together. These are some really nice pictures, actually, of, uh, of scientists from CFAS and anglers working in, in partnership. You can see at the bottom, there's the angler catching the poor beagle, and there's the scientist implanting a satellite tag in the poor beagle, which is then returned and beams back data to us. So that's a really nice example of working together. One thing that we're doing at the moment is we're interested in fish distribution and health. So we're interested in, in, uh, in, in what fish are held in different fisheries. In the UK we have a lot of commercial fisheries. And we know a lot about, about say, the fish which are in those fisheries. Um, we don't know so much about the distributions in the rivers. But anglers obviously go around these things and they catch a lot. Um, there's also a lot of discussion about whether, whether anglers are a big route of transmission of disease between fisheries, so through carrying wet nets or through wet boots, so carrying disease between fisheries. Um, but we don't really know much about how anglers move between fisheries at all. So what we're intending to try and do here is we're, we're working on web systems and smartphone apps uh, with freshwater anglers working with the Environment Agency and the Angling Trust in the UK to map the distribution of UK fish species, to think about passive disease surveillance so anglers can report disease through that, and to also inform our disease control strategies. If we understand how anglers are moving between fisheries, then we can parameterize our models better and do our risk assessments better. So there are scientific benefits, but there are also angler benefits in terms of things like a simple logbook system that people can use. The catches that, that I've seen from fish base and, uh, and, and fish brain tend to be trophy catches. These are more about general catches. Um, it can raise awareness and promote biosecurity. So make sure you dip your nets or you dry them between visits to fisheries. And in the end, you end up with better fish health. So this is quite an interesting one. We've done um, some big surveys of sea angling, catches, activity, participation, value in England uh, in 2012. And we did it in, in, uh, in collaboration with the angling community. We had a steering group of quite a number of members of the angling community. We publicised the, uh, the programme widely. We did a number of different press releases. We were in magazines. We, I think we put out 28,000 flyers. So we've got the same publicity for an for a economic survey and a catch, an online catch survey, but we get quite a big difference in response. We had 227 responses to catch and over 2,500 responses to economics. So we thought, well, obviously people don't like completing catch, so they're going in, they're getting halfway through it, and then just just crashing out at that stage, but that wasn't the case. We had similar completion rates. So what you see here is that there's something in the angler's mentality that says that you're more willing to tell people what you spend than what you catch. So that's an interesting thing that we need to think about when we collect data going forwards. Um, again, we did some stuff with catches and we compared roving creel surveys. So this is uh, where you go out and you walk around on beaches, you visit it, sections of beaches and you talk to anglers and you do face-to-face -face surveys with them. And we compared it to our online uh, survey that we had. And what you can see is that, um, is that there are some issues around the biases that you get. So there are a number of different biases Anglers that are more avid are more likely to complete online surveys because they tend to be the people that know about it and the people that are interested. Um, you have an unknown proportion of, 
and non-respondents to that, uh, you have different levels of coverage, and you don't know what your level of coverage is in your in your, uh, <coughs> in your online survey. You have, might have different recall periods for what people have caught, and that gives you bias in the amount that you recall. And you also tend to get things like rounding, where people round up to the nearest five or ten fish. Um, so what we found from this was that although the traditional methods that we were using were much more expensive, they were actually gave us they were actually more effective because we could we could correct for the biases that we had, and we we struggled very much to correct for the biases in online surveys. So when you do online surveys, if you're trying to do representative uh, so, or trying to get a, an estimate of the population level of anglers, you need to think very carefully about biases and how you're going to correct for those when you go forwards. And this, uh, this leads me nicely on to what we're doing in terms of, uh, of other data. So we know that there are lots of sources of other data out there, you know, things like match records, logbook specimens, <coughs> and we've seen that from other papers that trophy fish catches can track landings. So you can actually use them as an index of landings, and this is something that would be really interesting to look at in the fish base data. Um, but we also know that these sources can be un unrepresentative and subject to bias. So what we're trying to do with a PhD student at Bangor is to try and collate some of these data and look at how we how we can we can correct for those biases or use them as indexes and use them as part of the an angling evidence base. So it's taking maybe some bias data and correcting it. And this is a really interesting potential way forwards of using some of this information because one of the issues that we have with using angling data in, for example, stock assessments, is that we don't have a time series of the data. So if you can come up with something that represents an index, then you can use that index to track back and reconstruct the time series. So the last thing that we're doing is we're doing some shark and ray tagging. And this is a very different type of thing to the type of activity that we've talked about so far. And the reason I bring this up here is because this is about working with specific people. It's not about trying to go out and get general information from lots of different anglers. This is picking who you work with. So what we're doing is we're trying to target some people that go out and shark fish to put electronic tags on sharks. And this is an issue for us because we have problems with home office licensing. As soon as you put an electronic instrument on a on a shark, it becomes a scientific procedure and it's managed in a very different way. So we spent a lot of time trying to tag those two dead things at the top of poor beetles and spur dogs, and they're quite patchily <coughs> distributed, so it's very difficult to find them. But you've got angling boats that are going out there day in, day out, catching these things that can put tags on them if they have the right training. So the idea is that we can work with a small number of anglers to deploy these electronic tags. And that gives you a benefit for anglers, that you know, there's more and bigger fish to catch. It's a benefit for science. science. You're engaging with anglers, you're getting data, you're learning from each other. And there's a benefit for society in terms of better conservation of sharks and rays. So that was pretty much all I was going to say. Um, I think the conclusions I've got from this are that scientists and anglers need to work together to develop the, angle, the evidence base for angling and to maximise the utility of the data that we collect. We've got technology that offers new opportunities that will add to traditional surveys. We need to be very careful about how we collect the data in those new things and how we can correct for biases. And we need to explore the potential of these existing data sets. And it's not necessarily about finding all the partners, it can be about finding the right partners. So I'd just like to thank you for your attention, and you can choose which one of those you are. <laughs>